Can you even tell the difference between the counterfeit and the real? They look exactly the same, but unfortunately, counterfeit batteries can sometimes be very dangerous and they definitely will not perform as well. So let's take a closer look at the batteries. We'll short circuit all the batteries and see which one offers the proper protection. Then we'll see if the counterfeit batteries are designed for an internal short circuit. We'll see how the batteries perform in an impact driver and drill. We'll take apart the batteries and see what kind of damage took place. One of these two packages contains two counterfeit batteries. Can you tell which one? The package looks pretty much identical. A pair of authentic DeWalt batteries cost $130 and a pair of counterfeits only cost $80. So the question is, is that $42 counterfeit just as good as the authentic DeWalt battery? Both of these batteries claim to be the exact same make and model. DCB205. So let's go ahead and open up the packaging and take a closer look at each of the batteries. Both batteries also have a serial number. Both batteries have a date of manufacture. The authentic DeWalt is using a new battery case design. The counterfeit is still using an older design. So let's compare a battery from 2019 that uses the same design as the counterfeit. If you compare the 2019 battery against the 2024 counterfeit, they look very close to the same. Even the battery level indicator works the same. Even in 2019, this battery still had a QR code. This counterfeit battery from 2024 does not have the QR code. And the real DeWalt battery weighs 647 grams. And the counterfeit only weighs 604 grams or 43 grams less. I attempted to register the counterfeit battery on the DeWalt website. I was pretty surprised that I was actually successful at registering the battery. So is it possible that the counterfeit battery operation is an inside job? On the other hand, maybe this actually isn't a counterfeit battery at all. Well, let's go ahead and take a look inside the battery case. The batteries are indeed advertised as new, sealed, and authentic DeWalt batteries. And this is definitely a counterfeit battery. There's no circuit board. To make sure that this wasn't a one-off, I bought a total of three pairs of suspected counterfeit DeWalt batteries from two different sources, and they were all indeed counterfeit. The authentic battery from 2024 has a circuit board and looks quite a bit different. Both batteries should be using Samsung 25R cells. The authentic battery is using the correct cells, but the counterfeit's brand information is missing or hidden. Comparing the counterfeit to the DeWalt battery from 2019, the 2019 authentic battery has a control board, and it also has Samsung 25R cells. A drill uses a decent amount of current. So let's see how much torque the drill delivers using a counterfeit battery first. The drill will be in second gear. And a counterfeit DeWalt battery ran out of steam at 115 inch pounds. The authentic DeWalt is fully charged. And the authentic DeWalt outperformed the counterfeit at 152 inch pounds or 24 inch pounds more than the counterfeit. Both of these Milwaukee batteries are supposed to be genuine Milwaukee, but one of them's counterfeit. The genuine Milwaukee costs $79, but the counterfeit only $44.50. And the counterfeit Milwaukee is advertised as a genuine Milwaukee battery and even includes free shipping. Both sets of batteries include Milwaukee battery instructions. So the question is, which battery is original and which one is a counterfeit? And the counterfeit Milwaukee came with a set of instructions for the 4 volt and the 12 volt Milwaukee battery instead of the 18 volt instructions that belong with this battery. With the counterfeit battery, the print and the serial number is sort of difficult to read. However, the silver lettering on the genuine Milwaukee is much easier to read. And both batteries look so much alike, it's very difficult to tell if one is a counterfeit. Just about anyone could be scanned if they didn't know what to look for. And the counterfeit Milwaukee weighs 649 grams. And the genuine Milwaukee is 73 grams heavier at 722. And the counterfeit Milwaukee does have a control board, but the batteries don't have any visible information on their specs. I'll take apart the battery pack later in the video. Let's take a look inside the genuine Milwaukee. As expected, the genuine Milwaukee also has a control board. However, the genuine Milwaukee's batteries are green instead of blue. The cells are completely encapsulated by the plastic molding. I'll take apart the battery pack later in the video and we'll see if these are Samsung 25R batteries. A close look at both control boards and they look quite a bit different from each other. And the counterfeit Milwaukee battery just isn't making enough current to deliver a lot of torque. 128 inch pounds for the counterfeit. And the genuine Milwaukee performed much better at 154 inch pounds. Can you tell which of these two batteries is counterfeit? And the counterfeit Makita is advertised as an authentic new Makita 6 amp hour battery. So why pay $90 for an authentic Makita when you could buy a counterfeit for $45? Both packages do include the correct part number for this battery. The charge time circle on one package looks a little bit different than the charge time circle on the other, but that's about it. The barcodes on the back of the packaging looks identical. While still inside the packaging, the battery that I believe to be counterfeit weighs 640 six grams and the authentic weighs 78 grams more at 724. So a scammer could return this battery to a big box store in exchange for a genuine tool battery. Just looking at the packaging, a lot of people could be scammed by this counterfeit. Just looking at the side of the battery, they look pretty much the same. Looking at the top of the battery, there's a little bit of a difference with the color of the plastic with the orange for the counterfeit. The button on the counterfeit is also a bright white. 
The battery labels on the bottom of the batteries do look different, but they both look pretty legit. In case you're wondering, the one on the right is the counterfeit. And they thought of just about everything with this counterfeit. It even includes an anti-tamper white security plug over one of the battery case screws. However, the counterfeit's plug is made of rubber and the authentic one is made of very hard plastic. And the counterfeit Makita battery weighs 600 grams and the authentic Makita weighs 670. Let's take a look inside each battery case. And the counterfeit battery on the left does have a control board, but it does look quite a bit different than the genuine Makita battery, which is on the right. And the counterfeit's battery cells don't have any identification information that's visible. And the authentic Makita has cells that are encased in plastic. I'll disassemble both of these battery packs later in the video. Let's test the maximum torque with the counterfeit Makita battery in second gear. <laughs> And the counterfeit Makita ran out of steam at 123 inch-pounds. And the genuine Makita performed 21 inch-pounds better at 144. Comparing the counterfeit to the authentic batteries, the genuine batteries allowed the drill to deliver approximately 15 to 20 percent more torque for all three tool brands. Impact drivers require less energy than drills. So let's see if the counterfeits can keep up with the authentics. Each battery will have three chances and will go with the fastest time for each battery. And the counterfeit DeWalt performed well on the first lag bolt at just over 10 seconds. And the counterfeit DeWalt battery seems to be losing speed on the second light bolt. And 11.3 seconds is still a pretty good time, but that's 1.3 seconds slower. And the third light bolt seems to be going into the test log about the same speed as the second bolt. And 11.41 seconds is the slowest time yet. So 10.01 seconds is the time to beat for the genuine DeWalt battery. And the genuine DeWalt battery doesn't seem to be any faster than the counterfeit DeWalt on the first lag bolt. Maybe it's just a screw being driven through a knot in the board, but this is a best of three showdown. And 11.51 seconds is the slowest time yet. And the genuine DeWalt is working quite a bit faster on the second screw. Maybe the battery just needed to warm up. And 9.55 seconds is the fastest time yet, and that's about a half a second faster than the counterfeit. And the counterfeit DeWalt battery was slowing down with each screw, but the genuine DeWalt battery seems to be getting faster. And 8.3 seconds is almost two seconds faster than the fastest time by the counterfeit DeWalt. With the genuine Milwaukee battery, the Milwaukee Impact driver is making very quick work of the lag bolt. And a 6.49 seconds on the first bolt. And the authentic Milwaukee battery is warmed up and is working even faster on the second lag bolt. 5.36 seconds, very impressive. And the Milwaukee seems to be just about as fast on the third lag bolt. And it's over for the authentic Milwaukee battery at 5.72 seconds on the third bolt. And the Milwaukee Impact driver just doesn't seem to be as enthusiastic with the counterfeit juice pack. And 6.65 seconds is the slowest time yet. And a counterfeit battery should be fully warmed up, but it isn't helping. And 7.27 seconds is about a half a second slower than the first attempt. And a counterfeit battery seems to be struggling to make enough current for the Milwaukee Impact Driver. 6.96 seconds on the third attempt is over a second slower than the authentic battery. From my experience, a Makita Impact Driver isn't the fastest tool, but it'll last just about forever. And a counterfeit Makita battery seems to be performing fairly well on the first light bulb. And 10.42 seconds is the time to beat. And the counterfeit battery should be warmed up and faster on the second lag bolt. And the counterfeit Makita is actually slower on the second lag bolt at 10.79 seconds. And the third and final lag bolt seems to be going in at about the same speed as the second lag bolt. Just like with the other counterfeit batteries, the counterfeit Makita seems to be losing speed as this test continues. And 11.05 seconds is the slowest of three attempts. And the genuine Makita battery is fully charged, but it's driving in the light bolt very slowly. And the genuine Makita is even slower than the counterfeit on the first light bolt at 11.87 seconds. Maybe the Makita drove the first light bolt through a knot, or maybe it just needed to warm up. And the genuine Makita just made the fastest time yet on a second light bolt at 9.81 seconds. And the genuine Makita battery is supplying plenty of juice to the impact driver, and this seems to be the fastest attempt yet. And it's over in 8.57 seconds, which is almost 1.5 seconds faster than the counterfeit's fastest attempt. Comparing the counterfeit versus the authentic batteries, the authentic batteries are around 17 to 19 percent faster at driving in the light bolts. Let's apply a much bigger load on the batteries and see if they survive this test. I'll use this Milwaukee power inverter to power up a fan that pulls approximately. 150 watts and a counterfeit battery makes enough juice to get the fan going and the fan is using close to 146 watts and the counterfeit Milwaukee is still performing well at five minutes and things are still going well for the counterfeit Milwaukee at 10 minutes and it's close to 15 minutes and the voltage remains strong for the counterfeit at close to 20 minutes the voltage is dropping quickly and this battery will be out of juice very soon and the power inverter is down to 105 volts and this test is over at just under 23 minutes and this battery is hot to the touch but I don't think the battery is run just yet and the 
genuine Milwaukee made easy work of powering up the fan. And the genuine Milwaukee is just getting warmed up at 5 minutes and the voltage is climbing. At 10 minutes, the voltage is still climbing on the power inverter. And the genuine Milwaukee is still holding up strong at 20 minutes. And the real Milwaukee is now at 25 minutes or 2 minutes longer than the counterfeit. And it's still not over for the Milwaukee at 30 minutes, but the voltage is dropping quickly. And it's finally over for the genuine Milwaukee at just about 31 and a half minutes or about 8 and a half minutes longer than the counterfeit. A leaf blower is a very fast battery draining power tool. I'll use an airspeed meter with a pitot tube to keep track of the performance beginning with the counterfeit battery. And the counterfeit battery is at 7,630 feet per minute or about 86 miles per hour after a minute. At 3 minutes, the airspeed has already dropped to 7,074 feet per minute. At 5 minutes, the counterfeit DeWalt is losing a lot of speed at 6,753 feet per minute. And the counterfeit DeWalt is holding pretty steady from around 7 minutes to 9 minutes at around 6,646 feet per minute. And at 10 minutes into the test, the counterfeit DeWalt is just about out of juice at just over 6,000 feet per minute. And it's over for the counterfeit DeWalt at 10 minutes and 10 seconds. And the battery is hot to the touch and it's completely drained. And the genuine DeWalt is holding a higher airspeed than the counterfeit at 1 minute into the test. At 3 minutes into the test, the DeWalt is at 500 feet per minute faster than the counterfeit. We're now at 5 minutes into the test and the genuine DeWalt is at around 250 feet per minute faster. And the genuine DeWalt continues to hold a lead over the counterfeit and is still going strong at 10 minutes. And the genuine DeWalt is at around 6,600 feet per minute of airspeed at 12 minutes but it's just about out of juice. And it's over for the genuine DeWalt at 12 minutes and 10 seconds or just about 2 minutes longer than the counterfeit. And the genuine DeWalt battery not only lasted longer, it also delivered a lot more airspeed during the test. I'll use a battery adapter to test the Makita batteries in the DeWalt air blower. Unfortunately, one of the counterfeit Makita batteries has already failed. To protect the only remaining counterfeit Makita battery, I'll stop the test when the airspeed drops to 6,000 feet per minute. At one minute, the counterfeit Makita is moving less air than the counterfeit DeWalt at just under 7,400 feet per minute. Three minutes into the test, and the counterfeit Makita has dropped below 7,000 feet per minute. We're now at five minutes, and we're just over 6,700 feet per minute for the counterfeit battery. The battery continues to hold a pretty consistent airspeed through minute 12. At 13 minutes and 10 seconds, the airspeed has dropped to 6,000 feet per minute and I'll go ahead and end a test to protect the battery. And this battery is very hot so I'll allow it to cool down and hopefully we can save the battery. After just one minute the genuine Makita is at 300 feet per minute faster than the counterfeit. We're now at three minutes into the test and the genuine battery is over 600 feet per minute faster. And the genuine Makita is about 650 feet per minute faster than the counterfeit at five minutes. And the genuine Makita held a pretty steady airspeed from minute seven to minute 12 at around 6,700 feet per minute. And the test is finally over at almost 14 minutes. Just like the genuine DeWalt, the genuine Makita delivered a lot more airspeed and outlasted the counterfeit. This Milwaukee grinder will drain a battery in under 5 minutes. I'll add 5 pounds on top of the angle grinder and I'll replace the flap disc between testing each battery. All the batteries are fully charged. And the counterfeit Milwaukee has just enough power to get the angle grinder going, but the angle grinder just powered down in only 8 seconds. Fortunately, the angle grinder did power back up, but it keeps shutting down. And the angle grinder shut down 11 times in a minute and 15 seconds before the angle grinder would no longer power up. And this battery is very hot and it seems to be drained. I'll install a new flap disc and let's see how the authentic battery performs. And the genuine Milwaukee battery is allowing the grinder to maintain a much higher RPM compared to the counterfeit. And the genuine Milwaukee lasted two and a half minutes before the angle grinder powered down. The battery's not fully drained, but the battery did power itself down to protect itself. Let's test the counterfeit DeWalt battery first. I'll add 2.5 pounds on top of the DeWalt angle grinder instead of 5 pounds, since the angle grinder isn't quite as powerful as a Milwaukee. And the counterfeit DeWalt lasted close to three minutes before powering down. And the battery is very hot and it's down to one bar. I'll install a new flap disc and let's see if the genuine DeWalt holds up better. And I can tell right away that the genuine DeWalt battery is allowing the grinder to maintain much higher RPM. And the battery lasted just over four minutes before the angle grinder powered down. The battery life indicator is showing two bars, but the battery is very hot and needs to cool down. Let's see if the counterfeit Makita battery can survive an angle grinder. Just like the DeWalt, I'll add 2.5 pounds on top of the Makita. And the Makita lasted a total of 3 minutes and 49 seconds, but the angle grinder wasn't able to maintain RPM. And the battery is very hot and there's no signs of life. I've installed a new flap disc and the genuine Makita is fully charged. And the genuine Makita is maintaining a higher RPM than the counterfeit. And the genuine Makita battery lasted just over 6 minutes before the angle grinder shut down. The battery is very hot and there's a flashing bar on the battery life indicator. Before we destroy the batteries in the last test, let's compare the performance of the batteries side by side using a constant 7 amp drain. I'll mark the counterfeit battery with the letter C. Both batteries are fully charged and the counterfeit is at 20.5 volts and the authentic one is at 20.6.
about a minute and a half into the test and the counterfeit is at 19.4 volts compared to 19.8 for the genuine DeWalt. A seven amp hour load isn't too demanding, but the counterfeit is really beginning to show signs of fatigue at only 10 minutes into the test, dropping to 18 volts. And the genuine DeWalt is still at 18.8 volts. At 20 minutes into the test, the counterfeit's at 17.2 volts compared to 17.7 for the genuine battery. And the test is over for the counterfeit DeWalt at just over 31 and a half minutes. And the battery only made it to 65.3 watt hours instead of the advertised 100 watt hours. I'll stop the test at 13.8 volts to prevent damage to the batteries. And the test is over for the genuine DeWalt at 41 minutes. And the genuine DeWalt delivered 84.78 watt hours or almost 20 watt hours more than the counterfeit. The counterfeit Milwaukee is on the left. Both batteries are fully charged, but the counterfeit only made it to 20.1 volts compared to 20.7 for the genuine battery. And we're less than two minutes into this test and the counterfeit Milwaukee appears to be in very bad shape but only 18.6 volts and dropping quickly. The genuine Milwaukee is still looking good at 19.8 volts. At 15 minutes, the counterfeit Milwaukee is down to 17.5 volts and the genuine Milwaukee is at 18.3. And the counterfeit Milwaukee's test is over at about 29 minutes when the voltage suddenly drop and it's finished at only 56 and a half watt hours. The genuine Milwaukee is still holding up well at 17 volts and over 64 watt hours at 29 and a half minutes. And the genuine Milwaukee lasted just about 42 minutes. And 86.63 watt hours is about 30 watt hours more than the counterfeit. And the counterfeit Makita is on the left. At just one minute into the test, the counterfeit Makita is in big trouble at only 16.7 volts. The genuine Makita is still looking good at 19.4. At five minutes, the counterfeit is really in big trouble at only 16.1 volts and dropping quickly. And the genuine Makita is still in great shape at 18.9. And the voltage suddenly dropped and the test is already over for the counterfeit Makita at only seven and a half minutes. Unfortunately, the counterfeit Makita did not survive this test and there's only one battery left. And the genuine Makita lasted just about 44 minutes when I ended the test and it delivered 88.5 watt hours. Let's test the batteries for short circuit protection next. The batteries are fully charged. There are two metal conductors attached to the positive and the negative contacts on the counterfeit DeWalt battery. I also have a current meter to see how much of an energy spike occurs when I short out the batteries. I'll be at a very safe distance when the test begins. And a counterfeit DeWalt made it to 248 amps and it let out a puff of smoke. No signs of life from the counterfeit DeWalt. And the genuine DeWalt had a voltage spike to 290 amps for less than a second and immediately powered down. And there's no signs of life from this battery. Let's test the counterfeit Milwaukee first. And a voltage spike to 217 amps and the counterfeit let out a puff of smoke. No signs of life from the counterfeit Milwaukee. I still have a counterfeit Milwaukee battery left, so let's test the next one. And the second counterfeit Milwaukee made it to 193 amps and it suddenly powered down. It did blow a spark out of the bottom of the battery case. Let's test the genuine Milwaukee battery next. And the genuine Milwaukee made it to 277 amps, but it did not power down. And the Milwaukee tried to power through the dead short for almost 14 seconds. Wow, that does not seem like good overload protection to me. Then again, the battery did not catch on fire. I hate to waste another good battery, but let's go ahead and test the next one to see if we have the same thing happen. And the second genuine Milwaukee battery made it to 287 amps. Just like the previous Milwaukee battery, this one tried to power through the dead short for over 17 seconds. I'm really surprised it didn't power down a lot sooner. Unfortunately, both of the counterfeit Makita batteries are ruined from the previous testing. Let's take apart the batteries and take a closer look. And the counterfeit Milwaukee does have an interconnect that's designed to act as a fuse and it did work as designed. I removed one of the cells from the battery pack. A genuine Milwaukee battery is supposed to have Samsung batteries and this one is definitely not a Samsung. I look inside the genuine Milwaukee battery and there's no sign of damage. The battery charger would not charge the battery. Apparently the control board is the point of failure. I removed part of the plastic molding from the authentic battery pack and it does indeed use Samsung 25R cells as expected. And the counterfeit DeWalt's battery case seems to have melted and it's difficult to open. Just like the counterfeit Milwaukee, the interconnect on the counterfeit DeWalt did its job and acted as a fuse. And these are definitely not Samsung batteries in the counterfeit DeWalt. And the genuine DeWalt also has an interconnect that acted as a fuse. I took apart both of the counterfeit Makita batteries and there weren't any obvious signs of failure. I have several Makita battery chargers and none of them would charge the batteries. The counterfeit Makita should have Samsung batteries, but these are definitely not Samsung cells. The big question is which batteries are designed to handle an internal short? I'll be at a very safe distance when the test begins. And the genuine DeWalt, Makita, and Milwaukee all use cells that are individually protected against an internal short. The genuine Milwaukee individual cells manage the short safely. And things did not go well for the counterfeit DeWalt.
These counterfeit 18650s are not designed to safely discharge like the Samsung cells. I've had a lot of people leave comments saying they've seen these batteries catch on fire, but I had to see it to believe it. I hope this video helped bring awareness to counterfeit batteries, and I hope you can avoid buying them. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care, and I look forward to next time.